Hey everyone, it's our Lens Addict here, and today I'm going to be comparing the Mavic 2 Zoom with the Mavic 3 Pro or Mavic 3, whatever it's called, um, but just the Mavic 3, not the Cine version. So let's get started, let's compare them. So I'll put them side by side. So here we have the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 2, and his little Comparison size-wise of the two drones. And it's a good, also a good comparison of this little camera thing. So on the Mavic 2 Zoom, I would say this is worse, the design here. Although it is more compact, it's very hard to put this on, especially one-handed. You kind of have to like fiddle with it and just kind of go, come on, camera, go to the right spot, come on. And there you go, we got it in the right spot. Whereas on the Mavic 3, it's more of an all-encompassing thing where it's kind of like a muzzle. So this thing unclips, and then this comes off, and then you have the Mavic 3 with its camera exposed. Um, one interesting thing about the gimbals on these drones is that the 3's gimbal doesn't have as much movement as the 2. So I'll show you here. So the 3 only goes side to side, a very small amount compared to the two. So we'll just fold out the legs. As you can see, this one, that's all it can do side to side, up to down, you can do left to right. Whereas this one can go all the way like this. And it can also go all the way like this. So you can actually film the legs of the Mavic 2 in flight. It's quite fun, um, but you can't do that with the three. It can only go that to that, so you can't get as much movement out of it. Um, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. I think you may actually get more up tilt movement. This one doesn't tilt up as much, so that's a feature that's interesting. Um, let's also fold them out and compare size-wise what they look like and how big they are folded out. Let's do that. So, we're going to fold out this one as well. Oh, there we go. So, in my eyes, the Mavic 3 looks larger than the Mavic 2. Let's just have a look at them side by side here. We'll fold out the propellers. And let's just have a little look. Okay, so here are the propellers all folded out. Just following them out. It's a bit of a time consuming process to do that. And uh, there you can have a little look. So if we put these side by side, there's not as much of a difference as I thought, but the three does look bigger. I think it's back legs are further back and the propellers are a little bit bigger. So if we take the propeller off and put them side by side, we can see that the three's propeller is indeed longer. Um, so yeah, that might reduce the noise. We can also see that there's rubber tips on the end of the three, but on the two, they are plastic. There's no rubber tips. That's an interesting difference as well. You can also see the optical avoidance difference. So this, the Mavic 2 does have side sensors, but if you've ever used it, you'll know that they aren't very good and they only work in active track and a few other modes. They don't work at all times. And they've, I've never relied on these. They've actually like not done the right thing a few times. It has a sensors in the front, underneath, a light, an IR sensor, and more sensors on the back cameras, and then IR for the top. Whereas the Mavic 3 has um, camera avoidance and more sideways cameras for the optical avoidance and more for the front. The Mavic 3 optical avoidance, hands down, much better than the 2. The 2, I wouldn't trust it, an active tracker. It would happily crash itself. In fact, I'm happily, I'll put a video on here of it crashing itself on active track. 
Here you can see the side optical avoidance failing to recognize the tree on the left, and it ends up drifting into the tree and crashing. Uh, thankfully, the drone was okay, just had to replace the propellers, and uh, it ended up being okay, surprisingly. But still, uh, this is something that the Mavic 3 would never do. So I'm going to show you some footage of the same area doing active track with the Mavic 3 to compare. So this is my first time using active track on the Mavic 3. And you can kind of see me looking back very nervously because, you know, my Mavic 2 crashed and I was concerned that the same thing might happen with the Mavic 3. But actually ended up being okay here. So, you know, going through the trees, intentionally going close to them and like trying to, trying to get it in a situation where it might have a blind spot or hit a tree. And it ended up doing really well. Uh, you know, it sees this tree and kind of goes around it and it recognizes that where I'm going and locks onto me and recognizes the trees and does a really good job. I was very impressed with the Mavic 3 here. Uh, didn't crash at all. In fact, I've never actually had the Mavic 3 crash using Active Track at all, although I have had it graze very small branches. So when branches are very thin with no leaves on them, it does seem to not be able to recognize them but I haven't had it crash from that yet, but I have had it, I've heard the propellers go like on them, and I've, you know, I've been like, oh man, this drone is about to crash, but it didn't crash, so yeah, it did all right. I haven't tried the nifty mode because I'm a bit afraid of it crashing, especially because it's like a three and a half grand drone here in Australia, um, so yeah, not gonna try nifty mode. I think it's too risky to risk uh, an autonomous system that, you know, doesn't have a regard for either, whether or not it crashes. <laughs> it will try not to, but, you know, DJ won't cover you if it does crash. So I'd rather not put $3,000 in the hands of an autonomous system that isn't perfect. Now, I just want to be clear that the active track on the Mavic 2 can be quite good, but it's not perfect, and that's what wrecks it from being usable because you have to monitor it much more heavily. So this is the Mavic 2 and if you're always going forward it only really uses the front obstacle sensors and the the top one so it does a pretty decent job then. But as you can see it's much more jerky um, and unnatural with its movement. But it is it is you know able to follow autonomously. It is doing that successfully here. And, um, you know, I'm going to put it through its paces on the Mavic 2, go underneath some trees, and you'll see that it will actually, um, you know, it got stuck there. <laughs> so, I don't know, it's definitely not as good, but, it, you know, it hasn't crashed itself here. And it does okay here. You know, you can see it and noticing the trees and trying to get underneath them. And you can see it's, like, very jerky. It doesn't want to commit to going underneath. It's kind of like... Oh, oh, should I do it? Should I not? Oh, oh, there's a tree. Oh, oh, you know. Uh, whereas the Mavic 3 is very graceful with its filming and it looks very natural. So that's something to notice. So I would say this is probably as good as the Mavic 2 active track gets. And once again, that tree on the right, I have a feeling if I didn't walk forward here and instead I walked to the right, it would probably hit the tree. And that's what ruins the Mavic 3 active track for me. Um, just the lack of side, uh, the lack of full 360 obstacle avoidance. Like you, if you're going forward, it's okay. Um, but if you're not going forward, then that's where you start to see problems with it. Um, and that people don't just walk in a straight line forward. Or people, if you're active tracking someone who's not the pilot, they're not going to fly, or, sorry, they're not going to walk in a way that's going to make sure the front obstacle avoidance sensors are always being used. Whereas with the Mavic 3, you don't have to worry. It'll just work whatever way you're kind of, um, you know, going with the drone. I mean, this is a good test. I was definitely um, putting it, the Mavic 2 to its limits and, you know, showing what it can do. When it can do active track, it can avoid the branches. It doesn't always crash. Yeah. Anyway, we'll go to some Mavic 3 footage now. Some of the best that I've seen active track on, on the Mavic 3. So this is the Mavic 3 doing what I would consider to be something the Mavic 2 would find impossible to do, which is navigate through dense trees like this and also keep lock on the subject. And you'll also notice the footage is much less jerky, so it's much more usable. With the Mavic 2, if you were to do this, it would probably crash 
and two the footage would be very like you would see it breaking very aggressively and kind of just hovering and deciding what to do and you don't see that with the Mavic 3 here and here's uh, the Mavic 3 doing a good job going sideways which is something the Mavic 2 would not do or if it would crash but in this footage coming up, the Mavic 3 actually does hit something, and you'll see me look back when it happens. So there's very thin branches coming up that is right here, and you'll see that it just goes straight to it, and you'll see me look back when it hits them. So they're right here, and you'll see it doesn't notice them and goes straight through them. But it didn't crash. It definitely hit them though, and it made this like <laughs> sound as the uh, branches got in the blades. And it could have been a crash if it was thicker branches, potentially, or if it got around the prop and it got entangled. So, even the Mavic 3, its active track is not perfect, but the Mavic 2 would have crashed by now, for sure. You can also see it's pretty good at going underneath stuff, like here, and also keeping it looking very, like, scenic. Like, this looks like quite well-filmed footage here, of me just adventuring through the bush. And um, the Mavic 3, yeah, it's doing such a good job. And it even, I was expecting the drone to give up at this point. But you can see it'll, it'll just keep going. Uh, it like, navigates around that branch. And this is starting to get relatively dense. And there's moments here where I'm like, yep, it's going to give up now. Yep, it's going to go up. And it just kept going. And I couldn't believe it. Like, here I actually thought it was going to go underneath me at this point. But it still was like, hmm, can't go that way. And it figured it out quite incredible, uh, decided to go over, and it reacquired me, because it lost me through the branches, and yeah, this is something that I was thoroughly impressed with, and um, I'm sure the Skydio 2 is probably better, but still, I'm very impressed with the Mavic 3's active track, and its ability to reacquire lock after it loses uh, the lock on a subject. There was a little bit of jerky footage right there, though, which you can see. It could be because it was raining and the cameras started getting water all over them. Whereas the 3, I don't have any videos of it crashing itself on active track because it hasn't done it. <laughs> uh, I also really like the the ability... Uh, well, here's the, actually, let's compare the battery capacities. Let's have a little look. So the flight time on the 3 is much longer than on the 2. The 2 is about 30 minutes real world. This is about 40 minutes real world. They quote 45, 46 or something, but I get about 30, and on this one I got about 20. So here's the battery differences. So they're both 15.4 or 17.6 volts, but this one's 60 watt hours, almost, it's 59, and this one's 77. So this is quite a bit more than this one, but they're actually not that different in size. Isn't that interesting? Um, and I prefer the mounting mechanism of the batteries in this drone as well. It goes in quite well. Yeah. And we also have a difference in charging. So with the Mavic 2, uh, you charge with a, um, like a big dedicated brick. Whereas on the Mavic 3, it charges via USB-C. Also has a charger that is a lot smaller than the old charger. But let's check out the difference in how much power comes out of them. That might be an interesting thing to compare. So this one outputs 17.6 volts at 3.4 amps. And this one outputs 20 volts at 3.25 amps. So that's a lot of power in a charger that's similar size, and it's also USB-C. So you can charge your phone with this. This is great. Whereas this charger is dead weight. All you can do is charge the drone and you have one little USB port. Whereas this one has a USB port and you can charge your phone. You can charge your laptop. You can charge a big MacBook Pro with this, actually. You can charge almost anything with this. So it's, though it's 65 watts, it'll still charge most things. And you don't even need to bring it. If you forget it, you can use your Mac charger. So this is great. USB-C charging is a big plus. Um, all right, let's also compare the cameras. So on the Mavic 3, we have two cameras and it's a 7X optical and then a wide. 
And on this one, it's a zoom. So it has 24 millimeters to 45 or 48, I think. And it's all optical zoom. But this camera is much worse at nighttime, especially. In the daytime, it's not as big of a difference. I'll show you some sample footage. Here's some uh, Mavic 2 low light footage. So, you know, it's decent. The quality is okay, but if you look in the sky, you see a lot of noise and uh, the dynamic range starts to go once you the light goes down. And this is something that the Mavic 3 does much better. But this footage is still usable. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not as good as the Mavic 3. So. Yeah, we'll go to some footage from the Mavic 3 now and we can compare. Look how pretty the Mavic 3 is at night. The footage is very beautiful and has a lot more detail and a lot less noise. Given that the sensor is a lot larger than the Mavic 2 zoom, uh, it makes a lot of sense why the detail is so much better. But um, it's a really big jump actually. Jumping between these two drones, it's a much bigger difference than I feel the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 3 Pro. I mean, just look how much the highlights are preserved from the sunset reflecting off the buildings, but even the lights below are also recorded uh, without blowing out. So it's pretty incredible to um, get this footage straight out of camera, no color grading, um, just like this. This is amazing footage. Um, then I didn't edit it. I could edit it. And that's something that the Mavic 2, you had to edit the footage a lot more this is also a little quick demo of the Mavic 3 Zoom. So you can pull off some pretty cool shots with the 7X Zoom. So here are the stock cheap controllers that come with these drones. I actually really miss this controller. As it just had more function on it, more options. It has more buttons as well. So for instance, it had like a button for changing your EV. You could customize all four of these things to different things as well as pushing in. It has got the return to home. That's got the return to home. Well, it doesn't. It's got it there. You've got to hold down the pause button. And there's the pause button on this one. Uh, and then you've got your camera swap modes button. But this one also has more buttons underneath. So what we'll do is we'll put them side by side. So this one, the old Mavic 2 zoom one, had a zoom scroll, as well as a tilt. The lack of the dedicated zoom scroll wheel means that you have to use the touchscreen to zoom on the Mavic 3, and this means that it's just not as smooth. On the Mavic 2, you have a scroll wheel on the controller, so you can pull off some really smooth zoom shots, as you can see here. And because it's optical zoom, you can fit, like, zoom freely without worrying about a loss of detail. A dedicated record video button and a dedicated photo button. So this one was to focus and then pressing all the way was to take the photo. Whereas this one was only one stage, so you don't get any feedback. And you have to switch modes. So you have to go photo, oh shit, I want to take video now, press the button, wait for it to switch, press that again. But this one, you can be sure, you just press that, you're recording video, off you go. It's also missing the screen and it's bigger, much larger, and it's also missing buttons underneath. So this one has no buttons underneath, but this one did, so you could press, you know, you got more buttons down here too. So I do miss this controller. Um, I miss that it lacks some of the things that this controller had. Um, it has some of the things, sorry, that this controller lacks. Especially the inbuilt screen, because I've had the DJI app crash, and this screen will save you. You can still fly the drone. Whereas uh, this has no option to see any statistics or anything, especially in the sun. So it's a bit sad missing that feature. I really miss this controller, especially how compact it is versus this one. You can't fit that in a pocket. This one you can very easily. The other thing I really miss was the option to have tripod mode, which was very different from the cine mode on the Mavic 3. So tripod mode, it goes very slow. And you can also customize this to do Addy mode. Uh, you can modify the Mavic 2 to do Addy mode where it will just hover and won't GPS hold. 
Um, whereas on the Mavic 3, you don't have that option. So you can't practice what happens when you lose GPS signal. Whereas on the Mavic 2, you can. So I'm very familiar what to do if I lose GPS signal and how to fly the drone without it. Because I can practice by putting it into T, which I've customized to be Addy mode. Other than that, P and S are quite similar. The Mavic 3 does go a little bit faster, but they're quite similar, really. Next up, we will compare uh, the sound differences on these drones. So let's have a listen to what the Mavic 3 sounds like, and then we'll compare it to the Mavic 2. So let's go fly the Mavic 3. Uh, here's what the Mavic 3 startup sounds like. And the camera does a little bit of calibration. And let's see if we can fly it indoors. Let's give it a go. We will also use the Apple Watch to determine the noise levels. So let's do that. We'll take it off. Mavic 2. Let's get it started up. The old trusty Mavic 2. And let's have a look at the front. Let's take it off and have a little compare. So as you can see, the Mavic 3 is definitely quieter as proven by the decibel meter on the Apple Watch. And you kind of just hear it in the video really, it's much high pitched sound. Another really cool feature of the Mavic 3 that's also a really big safety feature is the air sense where it will detect other aircraft around you using ADS-B. Uh, which is like the planes and the helicopters, also manned aircraft basically, have a little transponder on them most of the time, not all of the time. And that transponder sends off information that the drone can pick up. And the drone, all it picks up is the altitude and where the plane is going or helicopter. And it'll actually notify you on the DJI Go app and it'll say, hey, there's a you know, a plane or a helicopter, watch out. And it shows you on the map where it's going, where it is, and it warns you. So it's much safer having the Mavic 3 with AirSense, especially because this feature doesn't require internet. So it's quite a cool feature and it's something I really think is good uh, advancing the safety of drones. The Mavic 2 doesn't have any feature like this and you just got to look with your eyes, but I'm sure there's people out there that don't do that and they fly well beyond where they're supposed to and there might be a helicopter coming at them and they might just ignore it because they don't see it because they're a kilometer away and they're too busy looking at the screen. So it's a very good feature, but don't rely on it. I think it's just nice to have and you know, it's always nice to see more things improving drone safety. Uh, out in the open, uh, like not inside a house, the bass sound of the Mavic 3 is much less noticeable as it is much lower in pitch. 
so you hear it less, and even less out in the open. Whereas the Mavic 2 has more of a high pitched whine to it, although it's still quiet and was one of the quietest drones when it came out, it is now not as quiet as the Mavic 3. I will now show you some footage shot on both the Mavic 2 and the Mavic 3, so you can kind of compare the two, um, yeah.
<laughs> I really hope you all enjoyed this comparison between the Mavic 2 and the Mavic 3. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see and I can get it for you guys. Just comment below if you have any other questions or concerns and I'm happy to discuss them or even make a follow-up video for you guys. Lens Addict out. See you all in the next one.